الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى آله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما سي آمين يا آمين We'll continue on the path that we decided to go through by looking into the life of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and how we may drive lessons for us to take uh, lessons that may be applied in our lives because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our example and our model لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ وَسُولَةٍ حَسَنًا You have the best model, the best example in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, We talked about a number of issues during the last number of episodes Today we'll look into another aspect of the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is related to his family life how he conducted his life with his own wives you know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of da'wah went the da'wah went into a number of phases and that is reflected in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the beginning, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went into the mission of da'wah in Mecca when he was nominated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, selected by the Almighty Allah to be the Prophet and the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Prophet Muhammad at that time was at the age of 24. 40. Okay. He was married and he had a number of children. As a matter, he had four daughters. Had four daughters and a son who passed away. Who passed away. So the Prophet ﷺ started his da'wah at that age. At that time, he was having his wife, what's her name? Khadija. Khadija radiallahu anha. Al-Mu'mineen at that time and he married Khadija when he was 25 years old okay she was 40 when he married her as a matter of fact she was married to somebody else before the Prophet sallallahu married her so uh, this is something that we you know about that part of his life this lady, Khadija was a businesswoman, a business woman. And she was hiring men to take care of her business. Somebody nominated Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was young. And she said, what is it? this man? Because he was known as the al-sadiq, al-ameen, the honest, the trustworthy. So she selected him and he, she hired him to work for her in her caravan that goes to Sham, to Syria, Jordan, these areas, to do business and come back. When he came back, her business was very prosperous. She had great profits that she didn't get to be before. She realized there is something with this man. There is something with this man. The time was not a profit. He was not. We talk about 15 years before prophethood. 15 years before prophethood. And because of the nomination of Allah, this great man to be the final messenger, the most beloved to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet spoke about himself. He said, rabbi fa Allah educated me in the best manner. He was an orphan, had no father. No matter. Imagine an orphan. Who would take care of an orphan in such a society? But Allah took care of him. But He brought him, him in the best way. Because when He became, when He, when He asked people to, to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, He was nominated as a prophet. Nobody was able to trace any skeletons in his past. You know, skeletons. No. no. Any bad deeds. No, no. Okay, in his closet because. He was not having no bad incidents in his life that those people will 
to invest in and talk about and say you've done this before. Well, now you're calling us to, yeah, come on. You see? This is why Allah brought him up in a way to be perfect. Now, in a society that was doing all evil, Imam Sallallahu So when he came back, the, taking the caravan, people start around Khadija were speaking about the prosperous business. And the man who was leading that business, he had little experience in business. He was young, maybe among the youngest to travel at that time. But because he was straightforward, trustworthy, honest, Allah made barakah. And these are steps that Allah is planning something great for this orphan. For this orphan. So this woman approached him, sent somebody to him and said, if you want to marry, I'll be, accept you as my husband. <laughs> he has never thought about it. Anyone who was 25, we think of 25. Think 22, 20. Okay, somebody younger. Okay, but 15 years older than you. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, there is something in the lives of the Arabs. Uh, when they get married, because the Islam, the, the Prophet وسلم, said, uh, al A woman is married for four qualities or characteristics of each one. Okay, four things. For deen first. For wealth. For good ancestral background from a good family. And then for beauty. Look for that in deen And the Prophet said, look for that with deen. Usually people marry for these four reasons. Yeah. But in Islam we marry for Indeed. It's, there is, is there anything wrong marrying a beautiful woman? No, no, no. But you might marry a beautiful woman with no deen, with no connection with Allah, she will give you a hard time. No, she's... And you might marry an ugly woman with very strong deen and she will make your life. And we might talk about that. No. You marry somebody for her money and she might get bankrupt. You'll end up with an evil lady. No. Okay? But deen, because when you have your relationship with Allah, you bring a family, okay? Uh, a, mother, uh, a wife is not a girlfriend, is not a mistress, you see? Because this is a bond, a very strong bond in Islam. There are higher aims for marriage in Islam that should be really observed when you get married. Anyway, the Prophet ﷺ consulted his uncle at that time, Abu Talib, said, yes, this is among the best ladies of Quraysh, from the best families. She was honest, very well known for her own uh, characteristics. At that time, she was not a Muslim because Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had, had, had no knowledge about Islam. Yes. So he married her, and he lived her with her until she reached the age, probably near to sixty, when she passed away. Okay. Even she continued with him in Dawah, and she was of great support to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And they lived in the happiest life. They had four daughters: Zainab. And father and his son, Al Qasim, who passed away. Okay, so this is why Prophet Muhammad is the father of the daughters. He had no sons, most all of his sons passed away. This is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the wisdom. Although the Prophet wanted to have a son, but Allah didn't want that to be, so he had to accept. Many people are angry nowadays because they have daughters. And their example is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You see, yeah, this is something that we should we should really realize a bit more. Anyway, it's difficult to talk about the family life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a nutshell. But I'll just yeah. give some glimpses about certain parts of the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how he treated his wives, how he cared about them, how much they loved him, how much he loved them as well. The Prophet Sallallahu spent uh, about uh, probably more than 25 years with Khadija in quarter of a century. And she was his only wife. And she was how many years older than him? 15, 15, 15 years. 15 years. When Khadija passed away, the Prophet Sallallahu was very sad. 
to the extent that he didn't want to get married. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was very sad. I'll tell you why. Now we'll travel to Medina. Maybe 15 years after this incident when Khadija passed away, or 10 years after Khadija passed away. One day, a woman knocked at the door of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she spoke. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi stood up. Aisha, she was a very young lady. The daughter, the daughter of who? Abu Sadiq, the most beloved man to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the greatest among humanity after the Prophets. She said, oh, you're very happy. He said, yes. This sounds like Khadija, this many years in Medina. Aisha got very jealous. She became jealous. She said, how oh, come? Allah gave you a woman better than her. <laughs> and this tells you something. How the gratitude of Prophet Muhammad was towards Khadija. She's now That's a dead. Sense. And this lady is with him. And he loved Aisha very much. He loved his wives. And he didn't hide that from anybody. That he loved his wives. If you don't love your wife, whom are you going to love? <laughs> you see? And this is something that we need to look at, Muslims. Sometimes we deprive ourselves of certain qualities that Allah has put in our hearts. If you don't really use them in the right way, then we might divert and go in the wrong way. No, Allah created us. This is our nature. We love and we hate. She said, How come? Allah gave you a lady better than her, young girl, pretty, etc. All she was saying, said, no, by Allah, Allah didn't, didn't really compensate me better than her. She believed in me when everybody rejected me. She shared her wealth with me when everybody deprived me. Okay? She supported me when everybody turned against me. Allah gave birth to a boy from her that he didn't give to other Ladies, Aisha said, by Allah, I have not seen Khadija. She has not seen Khadija all her life. And I felt more jealousy towards Khadija than any other woman because of the time, the many times that Prophet Muhammad would mention the name of Khadija. This is how Prophet Muhammad Even when she passed away. Sometimes we start gossiping about our wives. She's giving me a hard time. And she is the only one who hugs you when you come home. Serves you when you come home. Takes care of your children, sometimes your parents, your house. And you are not appreciating that while she's alive. Not to mention if you passed away, say, Allah has already relieved you from her. You get another one, I see. <laughs> I just, this is, just gives you the nature of Prophet Muhammad <laughs> And he's our model. He's our role model that we follow yeah. in that direction. Allahumma salli ala habibillah. Allahumma salli ala wasallam. You see, Aisha was really astonished. Astonished. And she reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to give gifts to who? To the friends of Khadija, even if she passed away. You mentioned those old ladies who were in Khadija at their age. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would send, even when he slaughtered, a uh, sheep, he would cut parts of it and give it yeah, to the friends of Khadija. To the friends of Khadija. This is, just gives you how, I and mean, just a, 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 a real understanding of how Prophet Muhammad viewed his wives. Did he mistreat Aisha? No. Yeah. He knew the nature of Aisha and accepted her as she is as he accepted Khadija. But Khadija was there at a very difficult time for the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All his wives came, also difficult times, but not as difficult as the time when he was really spreading his da'wah. She was the first among humanity to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Why? Because knew, she knew, she lived with this man now for about 10 years or more. 15 years, and she knew how truthful he was. He has never lied against him, any human being. He has never been dishonest against any human being. How would he lie against Allah? 
She knew that. And this is when he came to her. Zamiluni, zamiluni, dathiruni, dathiruni. I was afraid. He said, she said, don't worry. Allah will not forsake you. Allah will not let you down. Why? And she mentioned the qualities of Prophet Muhammad said before he was nominated to be a prophet. So this woman played a very important role in the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she occupied a very persistent, a very uh, strong position in the heart of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is one aspect in the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Will turn into another part of Aisha herself. Because Aisha lived with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina. And she lived after him. She was much younger than him. And she lived longer after him. And those women were nominated by Allah for the Prophet for a very important reason. Because the Prophet is a, was a legislator. He makes laws for us. We need to know about his internal life and external life as well. Islam is not a religion in the sense that it is my relationship with Allah, that sense. I go to church or the temple or the synagogue in one time. No, Islam is a way of life. The way you treat your wife is a form of ibadah, form of worship. The way you bring up your children is a form of worship. The responsibility that you show your, to your family is a great form of worship. You will be rewarded for Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by Allah, if you really work for that, with the intention that you do that for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And bringing a good family, an obedient family, and a family of Iman. So, Aisha one day, I'll give an example, but Aisha one day, uh, uh, the Prophet وسلم, was having guests. And you're talking about the greatest man on earth, about Muhammad, وسلم, the busiest man on earth, the greatest, the greatest leader ever to walk on earth, the man with the greatest mission. On earth. Do you know anybody with a greater mission than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So he was very busy with many things. He doesn't have time to people to tease him. You want to marry a woman to, to give you a hard time? No, you don't want that. I don't have time for that. And the wives of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never intended to tease him. Wallahi, they loved him more than their own selves, than their own families, than anybody else. They were ready to sacrifice everything. But it's the nature of women. And the Prophet ﷺ did not stand against this nature. So Aisha was in her house. And one of the wives of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ sent food to Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Aisha looked at it and she got very jealous. She broke the pot. And the food was all over the place. Imagine you have those dignitaries in the presence of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu seeing his wife doing this. What are you going to do if wife, your wife does that? <laughs> Send her home, huh? <laughs> Go to your family. I don't need a wife this time. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> no. I mean, sometimes we don't really appreciate how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is setting an example. And this is in a society where women were treated even worse than animals. Yeah. Where young daughters were buried alive. He's making a new world order for them. You see? And he's at the top. Everybody is looking up to him and he's going to act. The Prophet ﷺ smiled. SubhanAllah. And he said, your mother got just. Go and replace the pot with another one, Aisha. Because you broke somebody else's pot. Take the food and eat it. Allahumma salli ala rasulullah. I mean, if, if you really realize that, we may not reach that position. But he's setting an example for all those people who even attack Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with great ignorance. They, they developed this knowledge and misconceptions. They didn't really go and find out about the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. No, that he, they say he mistreated women. No, actually, many women nowadays in the liberal called women movement, 
have really indicated that he was the first liberator of women over history. They had no right. Prophet Muhammad gave them rights. And this is why the Prophet said the hadith, خيركم خيركم وأنا خيركم اللهم صل عليه. He said, the best among you are the best to their families. And I am the best for my, to my, for my family. He is sitting a role model. He is not only speaking, he is acting upon these values that he is propagating, that he is disseminating, that he is teaching and practicing. So this is another side in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And although this is how Aisha was doing that. But somebody asked him, he said, who is the most beloved to you? I wanted to imagine the society where he lived, where women were looked at, were marginalized. Young daughters were People didn't want to have daughters. They brag about their own, proud of their own sons, and they kill their own daughters. Imagine this society, how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu changed their own perception. Somebody came to him, and it is our glass. He said, whenever I approach Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he was smiling. He would welcome me. As if, he, uh, 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 as if I were the most beloved man on earth to him. So I wanted to take that honor. And he didn't say, but this is the situation. He said, I approached Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who was smiling to me and he welcomed me. Welcome, Amr. Okay? He said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, who is the most beloved human being on earth to you? I mean, he thought he would say, You, because he lived. He said, in a very simple manner, Aisha. Who was Aisha? This wife. Imagine this, and uh, Amr ibn al was a very well known person, one of the great commanders of Islam. You're not talking to a child, you're, not, you're talking to people who really spread Islam, who stood beside Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> when they fought against Prophet Muhammad, he fought virusly. When he stood beside Prophet Muhammad sallam, he gave his life. Even after the death of Prophet Muhammad sallam, he is the one who liberated Egypt, Amr ibn As. If this is in Egypt, the name Amr is widespread. Okay. So he said, Aisha, oh. he was really shocked. He said, from men, and not women. He said, her father. Simply, her father. Not the her. <laughs> because he realized what was going on in the minds of mind of Amr. He wanted to save the situation. The Prophet yeah. got in trouble. No, he didn't get in trouble. I know what they say. I know what they say. And the Prophet said it said it for a purpose. Said it for purpose. And this is why this woman has been attacked by many of the enemies of Islam in, in many directions. Because she was most beloved to the Prophet. And the Prophet wouldn't love anybody who is not beloved. Allah. You see? And he said, after that, her father. He could have said Abu Bakr. No, he didn't say Abu Bakr. And the Prophet meant it that he was using the feminine pronoun, her father. Her. And this tells you how even she described the life of Prophet Muhammad in his family. He said, the Prophet was very kind was very humble, was very helpful. Everybody in the Sahaba want to help, to, to be a servant to Prophet Muhammad He's not in need of anybody to do anything for him. But he's sitting an example for us. He said he used to cook his food. He used to clean his house. He used to fix his shoes. But when the time of Salah come, and he used to play with us. He used to joke with us, play with us, spend time with us. We were happy in his presence. Did they have electricity? No. Computers? No. Laptops? No. Faucet to get water? Uh, furniture? Cars? No. 
There was nothing in the life of the house part of Muhammad because he, he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me a choice to live in this life in the best way or save it for me in the hereafter. I said, no, save it for me in the hereafter. This is a passing life. No. It's not worth all this hustle that we really put in it. And she said, by Allah, by sometimes we spent two months without cooking anything in our, in our house. In the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, what do you eat? She said, the aswada. Dates, Dates and butter. Right. Did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi complain to anybody? No. Who said, Allah, I eat the hashi, huh? Big sheep here, roasted sheep. If he wanted that, it would come to him. But he never cared about that. He had all the money and he would spend it for the sake of Allah. For the sake of bringing up this name for us. And this is how the Prophet ﷺ was. But when he hears the Salah, it's according to Aisha, the Adhan, the call of Adhan, he would jump as if we were strangers to him. As if we were strangers to him. These and this is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in many of the hadith, uh, and I talked about this when we talked about the treatment of children and how Umama, his granddaughter, would climb his back while he was making salah, and he would make salah while carrying this small little daughter. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was kind, was caring, was responsible to his family members, to his wives. Even the dispute with the guest in his house, and he would treat it in the most Islamic way, with kindness, with humility, with respect. Arrogance was not part of his life. Arrogance was not part of his life. He will stop uh, about this, and inshallah, have discussion about different issues that might be raised regarding the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, shukran, alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdul